This is by far the biggest gaming disaster ever since that asteroid wiping out the dinosaurs, bruh. Bro. And look at this jawline, bro. My boy Brock Lesnar only wishes he had a jawline this strong. We got Kotaku, Chief exiting, peacing out. We got Asmund Gold chiming in because they try to cancel him. And I want to show you this video and I want to show you the receipts right now, guys. I got a bunch of receipts here because we're going to get into it. Like the video if you think there are one, two genders. Dislike the video if you think there are one, two, three, four, five, six. You guys the idea roll it what's Let's up see. everyone it's endemion and, and there's been it. some very interesting developments in the ever war against sweet baby and the bad actors who defend them from a new article attempting to downplay the entire situation while refusing to say why it happened to begin with as well as a new game that's being revealed that is developed by sweet baby and that game by the way has some deep ties to the company as i'll show you and there's right. also private messages that are being leaked that kind of unravel the entire situation learned, and much bro. more to begin, let's start with that article in question, which comes from TheVerge.com. It was written by Ash Parrish, who I already publicly combated her entire ideological stance, and I proved why she is clearly biased when it comes to how she covers video games. Ash Parrish attempted to goad users into proving that anything Sweet Baby has touched had any ideological push to it, which I answered and I came with receipts. Of course, she has since locked her account or simply blocked me because having the truth be spoken by a games journalist these days is next to impossible, it seems. Anyway, yeah, yeah. don't harass this journal either, even though they are clearly not willing to give the same level of respect. Yep. But that's yep, okay, yep, yep. because we can't- I mean, they wanna, they wanna harass the gamers, right? They think you disagreeing with them is harassment. Harassment is not disagreeing, okay? Harassment is not refusal to participate. If we refuse to participate in this bullcrap, that's not harassment. Harassment is you, sick is, pushing this woke-ass ideology every single day down our throats with all the mediums that are out there whether that be movies games okay one or two game all right fire but y'all still gonna be putting all that bull, bull, bull crap in every single uh, game every single movie out there and, and if somebody disagrees no nah, bro that's harassment bro that's harassment bro and stoop down to their level but now let's look at ash Parrish's article which attempts to paint this entire situation in a light that benefits her and her friends the article in question is titled the return of gamergate is smaller and sadder a group of gamers has mobilized a harassment campaign against a story consultant company, marginalized yeah. developers and journalists yeah. in protest of what they see as forced diversity in gaming. Right out of the- And they got the FBI involved, man. Because you guys disagree, right? Because you guys disagree, we're gonna get the FBI involved. Bro, let FBI, like, actually find real criminals. Bro, gamers, they, they, they just wanna play games. They will say, yeah, that thing sucks, this thing sucks, but at the end of the day, bro, like, it's, it's just banter. At, at the end of the day, Suck is gonna play what they like, and that's pretty much it, though. But nah, bro, like, we need to have the <laughs> BBC bundles, we gotta friendly UAV online! They wanna have the friendly UAVs online, bro, how much more BBC bundles you Suck is wanna have, bro? Come on, dog. you guys are monetizing the hell out of video games, and on top, you wanna, you wanna have all this crap, and just think about it for a second, okay? I gotta show you, like, another clip that's coming up as well, uh, especially with the Asmund Gold clip, and, uh, obviously, Kotaku guy, uh, or Gal, or rather, guy or Gal, I'm not sure, Jen, right? Bruh. Um, they, they peaced out as well, but it's like, I just don't understand, these suckers are getting SBI, Sweet Baby Inc., to be their consultants. They're wasting their money on that. They put so much money in the production and development of the game, then go ahead, waste money, uh, like I said, uh, hiring SBI uh, to consult them. And then when they put their games out, gamers don't like it. Therefore, they don't make money, and they know they're gonna lose money if they have SBI involved. But they still do it, though. That's different kind of stupid, though. I would think that, okay, maybe they, they had SBI consultants, once they lost money okay do it again maybe that was a dud to begin with they got it again they do it over and over they lose money over and over gamers don't like it because it's bullshit uh, but they still do it they ultimately have to shut down their studios as well but they still do it they rather shut down their studios than uh, not get SBI consultant. That's different kind of stupid. The right? gate, she uses her biases that have been disproven time and again as she attempts to place the entire movement as being pathetic. Apparently, it's smaller and sadder this time around, which is funny because based on the numbers I see from Kerbrutus's Sweet Baby Detected Steam Tool and the amount of discussion online, this is anything but small. And I would argue the second coming of Gamergate is absolutely much bigger than before and better organized too. It also has many people in leading roles actually ensuring that the message is not contrived. From Mark yeah. Kern or Grums as he's known on Twitter, Kerbrutus of course who made the tool, and I would even throw names like myself, Yellow Flash, It's a Gundam, 
And hell, even people like Critical Drinker or Sidney Watson has talked about this game journalism recently as well. So Ash's yeah. attempt to paint this entire situation as somehow less organized or smaller is just a flat out lie. No, but as right. you'll see, the further I go into this, she is not only- Like the video, share this video, uh, and shout out to the homie Endymion. Shout out, uh, shout out to everybody that's actually covering this, right? Because games have gone down the toilet. Helldivers prime example, even though I'm not the target audience, but hey man, listen, I actually love the fact that that game blew up and for the right reasons. Recently, we had news that, that came out, right? That Helldivers apparently, want, uh, they did not want it, but they were trying to force them to have all the, the, the walk uh, and, and the rainbow flags in the game, right? Uh, but they refused that, they refused that. The game is killing it. The game is killing it because the devs are truly passionate and they don't want to have any identity politics. They don't want to have any woke crap in the game. The, 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 the game ultimately is a very good package. Players love it. People love it. Game's killing it. They're making money. And, and game, the game has a different kind of setting, right? The type of setting it has, uh, it doesn't even need like any sort of like country flags. Uh, I'm hearing it doesn't have country flags. But the, those suckers were like, okay, uh, you, you don't have country flags? Add the rainbow flags right now. Add the rainbow flags and they said no. They said no and guess what? Game's killing it. So shout out to uh, the Helldivers devs. Uh, shout out to Helldivers right now. lying, it. but deliberately refusing to add important information where it's clearly required. Just the way Ash words her article proves that she's attempting to steer the situation into the game's industry's favor. So here's some of what she said and I quote. This growing group of people want to believe themselves a new incarnation of Gamergate, a harassment campaign started in 2014 that targeted women speaking out against misogyny in the video games industry. Back then, the harassers were cloaking their oftentimes violent harassment in the veneer of legitimate complaints. Social media gave a platform to those legitimate complaints while the games industry itself remained largely silent, allowing the movement to grow into a many-tentacled behemoth that bolstered the ranks of the alt-right movements that plagued our political landscape to this very day. But this time, instead of assembling under the false banner of ethics and journalism, this new campaign has chosen wokeism and Sweet Baby as the focus of their grievances. The result has been a wave of bigoted harassment targeting marginalized yeah, developers, bigoted. journalists, and gamers. On social media, the employees of Sweet Baby- This is- <laughs> Disagreeing is not harassment, bruh. There used to be a time, there used to be a time when, you know, in schools, teachers would tell you, hey, you need to make sure, you need to make your argument strong. Okay, why do you agree? Why do you disagree? I remember, I remember teachers were like, your disagreement argument ain't that strong. This is why you're gonna get a zero. <laughs> you're gonna get a zero. F for fail okay that's what they did back in the day but right now they're like please do not disagree do not disagree you need to agree you need to agree you need to agree come on dog that's not harassment bro like disagreeing is not harassment dog what are we talking about dog what are we talking are subject about? to a deluge of death threats developers who've spoken out in support of sweet baby are faced with similar treatment with several making their accounts private in an attempt to stem the tide of abuse the harassment campaign against Sweet Baby echoes the Gamergate movement of 10 years ago, once again targeting women, people of color, and journalists in the games Bruh. industry. But Bruh. this time, the events are playing out- Okay, pump the brakes though. I'm a brown man right now. I'm gonna pull that race car. Bruh. And then, you know what? I I'm gonna, just for the sake of it, right? Just, if you want more rights, you just gotta, like, lower your IQ down, and, and you gotta say my, my pronouns are they, them, okay? So right now, my, my pronouns are they, them. <laughs> I'm no longer Skizzle, I'm I'm Skizzle Axie right now. They then hopefully now I get more rights and uh, you know I'm a, I'm a brown man. I legitimately am. I legit ethnically I'm legitimately am. So hopefully uh, I get more rights right now. I need my representation. I need but my differently, representation. differently, developers and gamers are pushing back, affirming that the kind of diversity these people rail against is here to stay. And after speaking with Sweet Baby employees and spending time with their detractors, it's clear the goals of this harassment campaign are largely a reactionary backlash against trends in video games that cannot be meaningfully stopped. The yeah. Neo Gamergate fever surrounding Sweet Baby started with a Brazilian Steam user by the name of Kerbrutus. In January, he created a Steam creation page called Sweet Baby Inc. Detected, which the page's description explains, is a tracker for games involved with Sweet Baby Inc. According to an interview with Kerbrutus yeah. in Geeks and Gamers, he believes Sweet Baby is responsible for forcing political agendas and deep- Shout out to that Brazilian man! Shout out to the Brazilian man doing doing God's work, man. EI, yeah, the abbreviation bro. for diversity, equity, and inclusion into their games, end quote. I figure I stop there because there's already some huge misinformation that's being spread by the Verge's article already. Especially this part where wow. Ash Parrish says the Neo Gamergate fervor surrounding Sweet Baby started with a Brazilian Steam user by the name of Cabrutus. Right there, Ash is lying out of their teeth because this did of not course. start because of Cabrutus Rambo Steam tool. 
Yes, he so. made the Steam Curator tool, but it was not brought to the attention of anyone really, until Sweet Baby's Chris Kindred advocated to silence and ban Kerbrutus for making the tool. Had Kindred not said what they said and attempted to use whatever dwindling influence they had to erase the tool and silence Kerbrutus, none of this would have happened. And of course, Ash Parrish omits this information, and actually, if you read the Verge article, there is not a single mention of Chris Kindred's name whatsoever. Which, I don't know about you, but if you're a journalist writing about a huge online movement, don't you think the reason why it's happening is pretty important information to include? But of course, Yay. if Ash Parrish wrote that this started because someone in their echo chamber did this, then the entire article's validity and message would quickly unravel. Which is why, from the get-go, no matter what any journal attempts to say when it comes to the situation, the point is that the reason why it's happening is not because of the players. It was yeah. started by one of their own within the industry. And this alone makes their entire ideological stance begin on a bed of sand, and as the waves crash and their foundation slips away, these journalists cannot find a moral high ground because they- Okay, I did not see this plot. I did not- I did not- I did not see this plot twist coming, bro. That is it, absolutely insane. And guys, I want to show you this uh, right here, okay? It was around- I, I marked down the, the timestamp. This is in absolutely insane, bro. Like- yeah, let's this game. see this. The main character is someone called Haruna, who is clearly being betrayed by Anya Tarlatra. You probably know her from the god-awful The Witcher Netflix series, where she plays Yennefer. I have oh, no problem God. with her as an actor. She isn't responsible for why The Witcher sucks. That show blows because of its writers and producers. And seeing that Anya is a part okay, of- I, I have not seen the show. Like, if any of you have, let me know in the comments, uh, for sure. Uh, but this, It's yet again another case of the writers, or I guess content managers too, that are involved with this sort of thing. What's weird is that we're kind of seeing the sweet baby curse when it comes to female characters already. Objectively, Anya is an attractive woman, yet in some images from this game, she looks off? Like Damn. here, she looks like she's suffering from a- They hit her up with like a testosterone shot though. <laughs> Man, America is number one in a lot of things. America might not be number one, right? I get it though, like they don't want to be like China, always say China number one, China number one. They don't want to let China be number one, but dog, like come on bro, America, you don't need to be number one. I I'm in Canada, so it's equally bad, if not equally worse or more more than that right Let, let's be real and the craziest thing here is that i recently found this out guess i'm in montreal right so sbi sweet baby inc apparently is in montreal oh shit, oh shit. yeah that's my hometown man holy crap so you you understand where i'm coming from here right like canada is even more worse than america right now i apologize on their behalf guys <laughs> It is insane, but but holy crap! What the hell is going on? America wanna be number one in in their, their women are some of the highest in testosterone, bro. Like crazy, crazy. A stroke as both eyes seem to go in different directions, or this really bizarre concept art image where whoever did this managed to give Anya fetal alcohol syndrome or something. I Bruh. just why can't they just make Bruh. the characters look like the actors in a one to one way? How do you yeah. take an attractive woman like this and turn yeah. her into Greta Thunberg in a hood? Why do these companies hate attractive women so much? But what's happening here with Unknown 9 is just going to be the standard going forward. These companies insane, can attempt bro. to hide their involvement or the people's names, but- and, and apparently, like, I've seen a clip- Yeah, this one, this one. Bro, this is absolutely insane. That's, like, on the completely other opposite point, right? We'll talk about it. We'll At talk this about point, it. all it takes is a single image of a game for people to realize that there's some shenanigans going on. If I took one look at Unknown 9 without knowing Sweet Baby was involved, but I saw these images, I wouldn't even need to know if they were involved, because I could already tell. It's like that meme where the two guys are like, Western game devs have been here, and the other guy says, how can you tell? And the guy says, ugly women. It's just become Dang. a surefire way of knowing that these people are involved somehow. Like, here's an image yeah, from Sayo where you got three characters. Fable, Horizon, and there were, like, Last of Us, and there was another game, right? Characters on screen from three different games. Yeah. You got Halo Infinite in the top left, Vampire the Masquerade bottom left, and then the South <laughs> Korean game on the right, which is called Vindictus, Defying Fate. You can just tell right here which oh games were made God. by Western developers. Because only one of these- Dog, like, graphics have improved for games, but it's like, characters, they look so bad. Spider-Man 2, prime example. Like, listen, I don't have any problem with Spider-Man 2. Uh, I, I didn't buy it. Like, I, I was, like, traveling, so didn't have my Sony 25 on me. I didn't have my PlayStation 5. I wanted to buy the game. But you know what? I was traveling, didn't have my PS5. I was like, let me just watch it on YouTube, and I enjoyed it. And I love my time with it, right? Yeah, Minus the woke bullcrap that it had. But it's- But, but dog, Mary Jean, though. Bro, like, she she is beautiful in movies, she's always the gorgeous, the the, the hottest chick. It, she was decent looking in the, the first Spider-Man game. They uglified her in Spider-Man 2. They turned her day damn, hit her up with a testosterone booster or some crap like that. And, and yeah, even I have to agree, even... Bro, like, they... they uh, 
it's like how do why why do you want to turn her like ugly or crap like that bro like d don't make don't make no sense though and now we're finding out sweet baby ink was involved so kind of makes sense actually three women actually looks like an actual woman the other two look like a vague in between of genders instead i mean just look at some footage here of vindictus defying fate in action south korea unsurprisingly actually makes their characters look attractive and it shows a character like this would never exist within a sweet baby made product every character is wrapped up like a burrito and uglified in the name of social justice but they call it the sweet baby kiss of death for a reason since reports are now showing that Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League is underperformed even when compared to Gotham Knights, which also underperformed too. Both of those games, by the way, had Sweet Baby involved in the fact it was 60% less in sales when compared to Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh, you don't say. That's the thing, bro. Like, that's different kind of stupid, bro. That's different. If you guys just made the game the way it was supposed to be and you catered to your audience, bro, the game would have sold well. Everybody would have loved that game. But now nah, we want to have live service, bro. We want to have live service. We want to have uh, all th this kind of bull crap. We need to uglify the woman character in the game. Uh, give the give them like testosterone shots. Uh, have SBI as consultants, right? And also get the actual FIB uh, or FBI rather. You know what I'm saying? Bruh. FIB is just like GTA term right now. I hope they do not like nerf the Lucia Bruna in GTA 6, bro. I hope uh, they don't emasculate Jason in GTA 6. Because I'm feeling that way. I, I feel like that they're going to hit him up with like 20 or 10, 10 20 Bud Lights a day, bro. He is really bad when Guardians was a certified flop as well. So this should paint the picture that when you have Sweet Baby involved, your games fail critically and commercially too. And need I remind you, when Gotham Knights released, no one really knew of Sweet Baby either. And even then, the response to that game was terrible. Yeah. And this is the future that's awaiting many of these current and future Yeah, it's not... People are not hating on these games because of SBI. People are now just finding out that all of this is going down the toilet because SBI is involved. And they are the ones that, like... Uh, they are the, the consultants, right? They are giving them, like, yeah, bro, like, you need to, like, do this. Obviously, the game... It's like Sega's wanted like a good single player game and on the side, okay, you can have a multiplayer, that's fair, right? That's fine. But Sega's wanted like a good, good single player pro uh, single player project without any identity politics, without any politics involved. They People watch movies to escape, people play games to escape. One or two movies or one or two game here and there out of ten that has the woke crap. Okay, that's different, right? But it's like nine out of ten games are... are identifying with these woke ass politics in it so uh, people uh, people are having enough right and the game's quality is not what it used to be and mind you we're talking about the dev team that's not brand new they got the blueprint they got the blueprint what i mean by this is that they have produced really good games in the past so there's literally no excuse they know what their audience wants they know what people love they know what people and gamers like and they have like really good ips they have the blueprint like i said they know we're not talking about like any joe flo slow mo antonio from the streets that know nothing but they, they know they know their audience but still they're like nah bro we need the sbi and uh, sbi as consultants and uh, all that woke crap obviously uh gamers are not gonna like it gamers are not down for it bruh for games like unknown 9 when woke lunacy is encoded into the very dna of your product it's obviously impossible to remove it and i would be amazed if unknown 9 ends up being anything but a flop when it releases and of course since the game developer conference is happening soon or gdc for short i said a few vids back they would absolutely be talking about gamergate 2 to some capacity and well looks like i was right Bruh. unfortunately they're having a session there called yeah. so you've been cancelled now what and it'll last one hour during gdc it'll be hosted by Bruh. jay lynn who's apparently a part of feminist frequency yes the very same that is owned and yeah they they did it right already they did it and it turned out to be ultimate failure ultimate fail uh big fail to yeah rated by anita sarkeesian already these industry grifters who profit off of making problems within the games industry are offering the same solutions like they always do i'm halfway yep. convinced and, and kotaku apparently i want to show you this uh clip from asman gold as well you see the kotaku drama publisher demands them pivot away from political stuff to do more game guides editor-in-chief yeah what is this here uh kotaku editor-in-chief jen glennon has exited her role yeah so she tweeted out she's a kotaku person i'm actually surprised that she's the editor-in-chief kotaku i'm not blocked um some personal news i resigned <laughs> from kotaku and jim spanfeller is an Kotaku's herb publisher. okay i'm not sure what what this means like um yeah probably something to do with woke crap I i'm assuming i'm only assuming i really do not know what this means but either way, so, she, so many terms she's left right her now. role and she's no longer part of Kotaku. The parent company mandated the game's publication focus on game guides and, and deprioritize. deprioritize news. Holy shit. 
Wow. I mean, I'm going to be honest. I, I think Kotaku's damaged their rep a lot by, like, basically platforming people that have extremely unpopular opinions. And yeah, then th they, they hate gamers. They they really just hate every everybody that that plays games. You Coming know? out ad clicks because of that. Context. There are a lot of previous examples, but the most recent one is about the fluff piece Kotaku released on the Sweet Baby Inc. Steam group, where the writer claimed to have infiltrated their public discord, ignored the harassment campaign brought forward by Sweet Baby Inc. employees, and then added fuel to the fire, making random racist remarks for no reason. Now uh, so she says, hi, you cannot be racist towards white people. Bumble. Oh God. Meanwhile, you know, uh, <laughs> Sweet Baby Inc. be like, uh, they only need to hire black gamer girls you know because white people are threatening that's what they said uh, let's recently. see what she has to say the fact that leadership wanted to aggressively pivot what Kotaku does in the midst of a harassment campaign levied against me and the site for an original piece of reporting that was the second most read story for over a week is telling Mama. Kotaku has damaged their reputation tremendously by allowing people to editorialize and add in their own narrative about these games, their own like politics and everything like that. This has been a big problem for a long time. It's totally damaged their rep. And so, yeah, yeah I'm going to be honest, guys. I, I, I think that they're right. I hate women, hate trans people, hate other races, super racist, love to harass people. I hate gay people. Yes, yes. Bruh. I forgot about Bruh. gay people. Yes. Uh, Nazi, naturally. Obviously, I'm kidding. Kotaku is probably, like, the most embarrassing gaming news outlet there is. Its name has become synonymous with cringe and also just horrible journalism entirely in the industry. Their reputation is so horrible that their name gets used as an insult. Yeah. Guys, click on this video on the screen. This was the last episode that we've done. I don't know, guys. They, they're after GTA 6 right now. They really are after GTA 6. Click on this video on the screen. On the left, though, this is about Asmund Gold. Asmund Gold replied to Sweet Baby Inc. Check out both of these masterpieces right now, and I'll see you right there.